The first thing I'd like to take a look at now that the study is complete are cut plots for the pressure and velocity in the X direction. To create the cut plot, I'll right click Cut Plots under Results and select Insert. I'll select both contours and vectors. With the contour set to pressure and the vector set to velocity, and click OK. When I do, you can see the cut plot. There's an area of slightly higher pressure at the front of the sphere and some low pressure regions behind it, but if you look at the legend, there doesn't appear to be any change in pressure. That's because the pressure change is so subtle, you can't see it due to the amount of significant figures in the legend, but there are some slight changes. If I zoom in, you can also see the velocity vectors around the sphere. Let me change the contours in the cut plot to the X component of velocity. When I do, you can see the results are much more descriptive. You can see how the flow velocity drops in the wake behind the sphere. The wake is pretty uniform, though, as this is overall a fairly laminar flow. Uh, let's take a look at the mesh. I'll right-click the cut plot in the flow tree and edit its definition. I'll clear the contours and vectors boxes and check the mesh box. Notice that due to the adaptive mesh refinement that we've set, the mesh is finest near the sphere and coarser further away from the sphere in the computational domain. What about our goals? I'll hide the cut plot and insert a goal plot to look at those. I'll right-click Goal Plots and select Insert. I'll choose All Goals and click OK. When I do, an Excel file opens, and I can see the values for the drag force in the X direction in Newtons, and also the values for the drag coefficient. I can see plots for each of the goals and the data. Now, I said earlier that a Reynolds number 1 flow around a sphere should have a theoretical drag coefficient of 24. Our results are significantly lower and don't appear to be accurate at all. Now, why is that? If I take another look at the SOLIDWORKS model and the computational domain, I can see that there is quite a bit of surface area of the sphere that extends outside the computational domain, meaning it hasn't been taken into account. In the next few lessons, Let's make some adjustments to our study and see how our new results look, beginning with running this study again with a larger computational domain that encompasses the entire sphere.